Yo, welcome back to the BST4 channel. Wing us, what's going on? What's happening? Man, listen, I'm trying to clean this dang garage. You guys been telling me this in every dang video. It's a lot going on. <laughs> it really is, because some of the stuff is not mine. Not all the stuff you see on the ground is mine. So let's get into it. Let me be specific on this thing here. Some engines that you guys may mention is not going to make the cut. And I'm going to explain that. We're talking about a cult following. Like, I'm going to get this engine no matter what. This is the go-to engine. You get what I'm saying? There's a very difference between this engine here versus um, the single overhead cam. We know that this is a great durable engine. But if you have choices, people won't get that. Get what I'm saying now? So if you had a choice between this or that, Ford heads are going to more so lean to this. Now let's jump into this 289. That 289 came in a whole bunch of, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, let's start with the Ford flathead. Let's put some respect on the old school right now. This is the great, 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 great grandfather of the 289. And we're going to put some respect on this engine's name. Now this, be clear, Cadillac was the first to put him in passenger vehicles. Ford was just the first to mass produce it at a high rate. That's what they did. Now, 1935, Ford said, let's put this thing in everything. And it made sense. In 1902, a Frenchman made the first V8. He took a patent out. So 1902, he probably had that patent for at least a good two, three, four, five, six years. So probably in 18 something something, he had the goddamn patent for the V8. And then he, he perfected it and he said, you know what? Let me go get a patent. So in 1902, he made the first patent and then it was off to the races. Everybody was trying to check this thing out. But when Cadillac did it, whoa. When Ford really did it, they were like, whoa. Okay, so where was I? Okay, the Ford 289. Now this engine, wait, 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 wait. We gotta talk about the Ford FE motors, Ford Etzel. Now, the, the most glorified FE motor will be the 427. They made many other versions out there, like the 332, 352, 390, 406. But the 427 was the most famous one. But also too, they had a 428 and a 410. Again, the 427 was the best joint. Now, let's see if you get your hands on a 390. Now, you can stroke this thing out. Stroke it, you know what I'm saying? You can get somewhere around 500, maybe 475 horsepower. Now, also, there's another option. You can do away with the FE motors. You can do a 460. They were plentiful. These blocks are a lot stronger than most realize. They're very popular not only in drag racing, but in mud trucks and the marine industry as well. The great thing about them is how easy they are to make a stroker out of. There's no grinding or clearancing needed for strokes up to four, five hundred, and the Chevy boys can't make that claim. Big block power. A lot of the guys on the raceway, they use that versus the FEs because the FEs are kind of hard to get your hands on a little bit, but the 460 would do just as good and you can make a lot of power on a budget. So these engines here, are performance driven. All the motors won everything back in the day. Le Mans, NHRA, what, 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 NASCAR with the Galaxies. They, look, this is the number one engine that Ford ever built. Number one. I don't care what you say. The most sought after unicorn out of the group will be the 427 Camer. Motor that is a kind of a holy grail. So, believe it or not, single four barrel or dual quads on it, probably a little over 800 horse as it is now on pump, mind you. Um, as it is now in mid sixes, seven. No, I'm sorry, it's very disappointing. I know. I In 1967 Hot Rod article, Ford dealership owner Bob Tusker expressed his disappointment in Ford's performance offering by showcasing his personal KR8 Mustang, a 1967 hardtop modified with a 406 heads, GT390 camshaft, and other components readily available from dealership parts bins. His point? 
Ford already had the pieces to offer the Mustang that can compete with the GTOs and SS Camaros. The publicity awakened the sleeping giant. In January 68, Ford sent five Wilmington white Mustang fastbacks to the NHRA Winter National, specially built as lightweights without seam sealer and sound detonator, and equipped with a 428 that incorporated many of Tesla's modifications. So with that said, if you've listened to the details of that rhetoric that I just spewed, it's all about combinations. A man took, figured out which one he can, he pieced together something magical. He was pissed at the Ford performance and this, that, and the third. A real die-hard Ford person said, look, man, I'm tired of this. I'm going to figure something out. And this is what he did. Nothing was custom. All was in the parts bin. Off of this 428, 390 cams, this block, and made something happen with a light frame. Because you got to remember, you got to have a light frame to be able to do this. And this thing worked. Cobra Jet, right out the box. Finally, we can talk about the 289. Even though there were other two liter engines, smaller displacement engines Ford had, we're not gonna talk about it. I'm gonna let Carl Shelby tell you why and what happened. I took and in, in, over in Dean Moon's shop using his dynamometer, built some uh, Weber carburetor versions of the, of the 221 before we ever put it in a car they built a 260 out of it. The 260 is what we built the first few Cobras, I think uh, 100 of them or something, no, maybe not 100, less than I that. I think it was reported in 75. Yeah, <laughs> right. Uh, we built them with a 260, then they came out with a 289. And uh, that was a wonderful engine. They were coming right along with Chevrolet until uh, they had a lapse there and uh, Stock car racing took the precedence. The green flag, and the race is on. Don White, a number two Dodge Charger, cuts off Parnelli Jones, a number 15 Ford, going into turn one. Boyd is third, and ready fourth. Oh, a spin out in the first turn. Started spending her time uh, building 427s, and uh, they let Chevrolet get ahead of them in the 289 business. We had nothing to compete with. I had to jump in right quick and start building 427s. I never wanted to build a 427. Sir, and you made the 427 cranking. I'm serious, you, within these Cobras here, and this is a bad behind car, and nevertheless, one of the originals over there. And what I'm trying to figure out, and you guys are thinking about, there was a 351, right? Where did that fit in the mix? Why didn't Carl Shelby want to touch on that motor? Because most Mustang guys of now, they like the 351 versus the 302 due to torque and horsepower and all of that. But why didn't Carl Shelby even talk about that? I'm sure that engine was around. You know, you could flip flop the Cleveland with the Windsor heads. You know all about that swap and everything like that. Make a Boss 302, take the heads off of that, put it on 351, Boss 351. You know what I mean? You could do all that type of stuff. So why didn't he want to even touch on that? Held our ground, we had to build a 427, which I said I said I never wanted to build because I never wanted to build a Mustang. Well, I did after we got the building, but uh, we were just barely holding on. We were out horsepowered by Chevrolet, and that's when we had to make the decision to quickly build a 427 when they came out with a Stingray. They weren't supposed to be in racing, but they came out with a Stingray, and that's when... Uh, we quickly built the 427. When you put something like that with so much torque, you increase your weight tremendously. Your drivetrain has to uh, increase in weight and size all the way down. It's just not a bigger engine. You have to have a gearbox uh, that'll take the torque. You have to have a bigger car, a heavier car. You, you, you lose a lot of your agility in an automobile. It, it, it never handled as, as good as the little 289 did. And yet we were forced to do that uh, uh, because we, we had to have something to blow off the Corvettes. So he, we didn't know that they weren't going to build a thousand of the, of the, of the, was it the Grand Sport? Grand Sport, yeah. yeah. He, he favored the 289. He wanted the 289 to be the right deal and i have a clip of a 289 in some small italian thing this thing was cranking
All right, a quick wrap up because this video is getting a little bit too long and dragged out because it's just so many engines out there. But now, some of you guys may say 289. Majority of you guys won't say 289. Even though you have the 289 hype, you're not going to go for that. Some of you guys are going to say 351, but you're not going to go for that. Even though it came in a boss form and high performance form or whatever. Many of you guys and us are going to say the 302 in the middle. Because it's, it's in the middle of the 289, it's in the middle of the 351. Or the 351 is in the middle of a, a 302 and, 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 and 427 and all those bigger engines. 360, 390s and all of that. Good intermediate engine the 351 now what they say about the 351 is the boss 351 is more like a drag racing orientated than the 302 but it was better handling than cobra jet so the cobra jet is just to go straight not to make left or right turn that's what it's meant for now the 351 is a little bit more agile the, the 302 is a lot more agile 289 you already know what that is so depending on what type of racing that you're doing is what engine you're going to put inside your car. And that's what you have to figure out. Now, in my analysis of which one is the best engine, it's a really hard take. But leave your comments below and let me know in order what is your best engine in order. Now, the next video will be about the modular engines. All right. Everything with a cam overhead. All this stuff here was a cam in the motor type thing, except the 428 single overhead camera. That one was going to be in the next video. So thank you for watching this episode of Build Something TV, man. Hope you guys were enlightened in some kind of way. Click like button, click the subscribe button, and I want to check you out in the comment section. We can talk about which one is first because I have no clue which one is first. You know what I mean? I, I kind of have a clue, but check me out in the comment section. All right. See you guys. <laughs>